Okay. The internet broke, so we're going to start with prayers one more time. We'll go back to that, and then we can. So, let's. Okay. All right. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. With you. <clears throat> oh God, whose blessed Son made Himself known to His disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Um, a reading from Acts. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, friends. Okay, so we broke the internet. We're recording this instead, and we can post it afterwards. Sorry for all those that are missing out. Uh, why don't we start off as we've done the last few weeks with celebrations. Stephanie, I know you've got something that you'd like to celebrate in our congregations, and then you can kick us off with our conversation with Les. Yeah, so um, St. Luke's in Livingston, um, they there were some really devastating tornadoes last week in, on Alaska, and they had some parishioners affected, but um, they have their church is part of the recovery effort. They have a um, something. Um, the resale service. shop? Resale shop. Thank you, Ellie. Words are hard these days. Uh, resale shop that's been uh, collecting clothing and other items, um, and I'm sure they would appreciate your prayers. But it's lovely to see a church <clears throat> continuing to do the work of the church, even despite social distancing and, and the coronavirus. So with that, um, let's welcome Les Carpenter. Thank you so much for joining us. Les is the rector of St. Aidan's in Cyprus, and he's been doing some amazing work with his uh, with his congregation. Um, so we wanted, I, I've had some conversations with Les around how he's doing such a good job welcoming and including people into his space um, virtually. So I, we invited him on to, to talk about that. So I see you're in your worship space and you have curated that very well. You have things behind you. So, um, and I, I know that's because I've watched your service online. I know that's what you, uh, how you set it up most Sundays. So talk, walk us through like your process on how you set that up and what, what you were thinking to, to, to get to that place of inclusion for your people. Well, um, uh, <laughs> thank you, Stephanie. If I'm one of those people. It's hard for me to take a compliment, but I'm going to try. Um, thank you. Uh, so, and yes, I am, am here in the worship space. That's not a virtual background or anything. Um, uh, it takes every piece of technology our congregation owns to make this work. So um, uh, basically when uh, the stay at home order came down and all this sort of stuff was happening, I sort of had this like, uh, moment of clarity, I guess, when I was like, I need to stop thinking about myself as the rector of the church as it was. And I need to start thinking about myself as a digital church planter, even if it's only for a season. And so um, that's what I started doing. Uh, and, you know, not just as a planter, but a planter with a really incredible list, because I'm blessed with a congregation that is fantastic. Um, and uh, you can see a lot of them. Yeah, those are actually their name tags. They have pictures on them. So uh, I put them on the altar and we pray for them individually. And then like that became a bit of a symbol, right? For the presence of the community. Um, 
it's, uh, it's interesting for me as a priest, like I'm used to having the congregation in front of me, um, but now I have them behind me, um, which is a sort of a unique place to be in leadership. Um, when I was thinking about like cultivating uh, the worship experience and the experience people are having together, uh, I, my first thought was, you know, if people are going to be worshiping in their living room, it's got to feel a lot like a house church. Um, uh, I also have included a lot of like the like altar or churchy images, you know, um, too, uh, that may be uh, less uh, informal in that way. And I think that the contradictions actually uh, have been really a, a grace filled thing. But, um, but that was my original vision is like, we want, I want it to be closer, more connected, all that kind of stuff. I have this like weird theory that uh, of aesthetic temperature. Um, so, you know, like some churches feel cool, you know, like not Fonzie cool, but like Gothic archway, um, uh, uh, chanting cool. Other churches uh, feel are like their sort of normal brand is like warmer. Uh, my church is on the more warmer side, but I think that whenever you take anything that exists in the world and put it in the virtual world, it decreases the, the temperature. So that which was cold or was cool becomes cold. That which was warm becomes lukewarm. Um, so for that reason, I've been trying to like turn up the uh, warmth of it all. So, um, and find like different fun ways of connecting in that, you know. Um, the band sort of disappeared because I felt like when we had the stay at home order, at least, uh, I didn't want more than one person in the room at a time. So uh, I borrowed my five year old son's blue ukulele. Um, I've got it here, you know. And so on Sunday, I'm in full robes and playing the blue ukulele. But there's something about the contradiction sort of makes it work, right? And that playfulness, I think, is a, is a really good gift. Um, uh, I also try to include the congregation in the making of liturgical decisions. So like my first Sunday, I did this live like promo video with like a fashion show where I tried on different outfits. And I was like, put in the comments. Um, uh, I was like testing out different mics. I was like, do you like this mic or do you like this mic? Um, uh, and interestingly enough, like, I think that helped people feel like they were part of the process uh, and invited. And in fact, we had our first member of the church who joined after uh, like having never stepped on foot on, on campus before. Actually, I asked her like, what was it that like made the decision? Because apparently she'd been like watching us online for like a year. And then she emailed me after we were in quarantine. It was like, I want to join that church. I was like, what was it? And she was like, it's the clergy fashion show. <laughs> Because she's like, you're clearly like just trying to make it work. And like, just to try to be part of that adventure, I think makes it more inviting too. So, um, worship is, go I'm ahead. Gonna, I'm going to interrupt you right there because there's a question I wanted to ask you. So you said that uh, the church had been online. You had been broadcasting services before stay-at-home orders? Well, um, before the county stay-at-home order. So the right. bishop told us that, yeah. Um, and, uh, at which point we went on Facebook and live first, um, with like a phone <laughs> and that was painful. Um, uh, but also like part of the adventure too. But what I said is once the County passed the stay at home order, I didn't even want to bring the band in. Right. Um, right. And so I just started doing it. And you, when you were serving, surveying people about what you were wearing or about the different mics. Were you doing that kind of, was that a live survey where were you broadcasting on like Facebook live and people were responding to you in the moment or was that something that you were um, leaving up there for people to comment on asynchronous, asynchro what is it, how do you say the word, asynchronously, if that's a word? I believe you, I have no idea. <laughs> um, uh, so the answer to your question is yes, like um, I, I just know the way that notifications work on my phone. And when someone goes live, like it goes, bah! Um, so before worship, I would go, I go live like two or three times with like, Hey, there's this interesting thing, whatever, blah, join us for blah. And, or asking a question or whatever. Oh yeah. And by the way, our worship's going to be here at 10 30. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, to try to 
try to get on people's roadmap. So, it, cause it takes a while for people to find the live videos when they come up. Um, that's so, good. Yeah. That's good. So it's nothing really complicated, but it is just something to get that in front of people so they don't forget to come and find you for, for worship on time. That's mm -hmm. good. I like that. And it allows you to test your equipment too. There's all kinds of wins. Uh, that's a good, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> I liked, I liked, I mean, I think it's just important to point out that, you know, you're not in a space that's any different than the worship space you use every Sunday, but your mic is close to you where you, you're sitting. First of all, you're not standing. Your mic is close to you, so you don't necessarily hear the boom of an empty room, the echoey sound that we get if a mic is removed uh, from where you're standing. You have your camera up close to you, so it's not, it's not capturing an empty room and you. Uh, but there's that intimacy that you were talking about. And I, and I just have to, I know you already mentioned this, but I, I feel like it's worth commenting the, the, that aesthetic, uh, almost, I want to use the term icon of the congregation behind you with the, 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 um, the name tags seems like such a stroke of genius to have that visual there that we may not be together in person, but we are here together. Um, so I, I think that it's just worth commenting on those, those things um now well, and i greet people too like in the beginning i'm like hey if you show up write your name and i'll be like oh my gosh it's jerry oh goodness jill is here and like and i i welcome people because like i said i try to I, I try to keep it to increase the warmth i think is important in this um i like that I like that. Now, is that that kind of a move towards trying to make sure that you're creating some kind of an interaction, interaction um, and engaging with people in the online space? Is that something that you alone are doing or has anybody else been tasked with doing that work with you? Oh, you mean like in the parish? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you gather online, is anybody doing that, that work that you just described as you're seeing people come, come online? And um, well, uh, it's interesting how more and more volunteer spots are starting to open up as we're beginning to figure out the streaming thing. Like I've got a guest worshiper that comes on every Sunday. Um, uh, that's like a surprise. And I like move around a flashlight and like, who's it going to be? Oh my gosh. Who, who? Um, uh, it, and it's, I guess describe a little bit more of who's, who is the guest worshiper? Is that someone from outside of the parish or? No, it's a member of the church. Okay. I think it's really important that people see people's faces. So I've started doing things like uh, just interviewing random members of the church to be like, how's it going? What's the funnest thing you've done? Um, uh, trying to fi find ways to put faces um, and voices of the people that people know in front of them again. Um, uh, that's been cool. Um, you've been, uh, in terms I, of the engagement. Do... I'm sorry, oh, go sorry. ahead. You've been inviting them to do is a Compline with your pajamas mm -hmm. and prayers too. PJs so. and prayers, yeah. Um, we uh, we started PJs and prayers to, as a as a more accessible name for Compline. Uh, a long, a while, quite a while. We've been doing it seasonally only. And this period when we relaunched it, I started getting volunteers to run it, um, so that once again, they could, people could see another face or whatever. I still join and I play along with them and I put in the comments and stuff like that. But the truth is like the engagement has been crazy beautiful. Like even besides the like getting people's faces and names, just like on the comments. Um, I will never forget our um, Palm Sunday service. It will change the way I look at palms forever. I did this thing where I was like, we always wait to come to, to get the blessing of the palm and take us with us. But the story, it's about what you leave behind. The palm is, leave is what you put at the feet of Jesus. And so I talked about how those very same people who laid the palm leaves are the ones that will turn on them come Friday. And so to me, like the palm leaf became a symbol of our failed intentions. And so I just invited people to like, what were your good intentions that fell away? Um, and people talked about like everything from um, uh, trying to brought, intending to be able to buy a prom dress, um, uh, to starting a new job, to uh, all these sort of things. And with every one of them, I just dropped another palm leaf on the um, path to the altar. Uh, and it was, it was just, like I said, it was really beautiful. Um, I think this is a time to really raise the stakes too. I think um, people have real spiritual needs right now. 
um, whether it's for grief or to find persistence and patience. Um, and I think that like, who's doing that but the church right now? I don't know. Um, so I have a really strong sense of mission for us right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that when you name that, it people respond and that's what I've seen. Um, it makes it easier too if you add in a little bit of the silly. Like in that same service, someone had told me before they were like, they were like, I can't take these like heavy hymns and stuff. So I played Seeky first, but it was still Lent. So I couldn't do the Alleluia part. So we just scatted it. And that was like apparently everyone's favorite thing was like the do be be do do be do do. Um, because it was a release, right? Because we just had this really heavy thing, but then there was also the silly. So being able to combine both the serious and the silly, I think that's something that's a real gift in this time. Yeah. Um, I also think that I'm like, I have a huge uh, emphasis on being live. I think that's something I've been working really hard at. I know a lot of people are doing a lot of recorded stuff and I respect them, but I think it's really important to be live because there is nothing that preaches the gospel right now more, I think, than making a mistake and laughing at it. Mm because everything's imperfect. And so if we can be in worship and make mistakes and just laugh at it, it releases our heart in a way that I don't know anything else. That, like, I don't know of any like turn of phrase I could create that could, uh, pre that could proclaim the gospel of grace more effectively in this context than that. So um, I'm all for live because it makes you look like an idiot and <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Love it though. I love that, like just that attention to the well, it's emotional intelligence, right? It's like paying attention to like this is where people are at. This is what they are going through. And we need to be the space where that can safely be expressed and and dealt with and let go of. That seems really important right now. That people need those spaces where they can grieve but also laugh at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, they need permission to be able to do both. I love that you're creating a space like that. That's cool. So um, we're hearing a lot about people phasing into coming back together um, and seeing that sort of come down the pike. Do you have any thoughts about how you're going to welcome people into a sort of hybrid space? Hmm. Yeah. I got lots of thoughts and no plans at the moment, Ellie. Um, uh, feel free to, uh, <laughs> to, to write, to tell me how to do it. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'm still, like I said, I'm still sort of mulling over some of those sort of stuff. Um, the bishop uh, sent out a very thoughtful, I think, set of resources last week. Um, honestly, I've been focusing on trying to make it work now. Of course, with the governor's recent um, statements, it'll be really interesting to see how those like pressures of like trying to stay safe, but also um, the governmental leaders sort of pushing us to to uh, open up our doors a little bit more and how we sort of uh, marry those two things. Um, uh, I have some ideas that I need to ask the bishop's permission on too, but uh, I do think that like there will be a, a need for a hybrid space. My guess is it, the first step is going to be including just a very small number of people into this room with me um, that uh, still has it focused on streaming um, and then beginning to adapt. But once, um, once it's back full, uh, full uh, in-person worship again, I think it's also going to be important for us to continue these practices of having like an intimate experience online available for people. Um, I have one parishioner who lives a lot of her life online. And she talks very uh, passionately about how her friends who are homebound feel more spiritually nourished now than they can't than they do since they can remember. Um, and they're just begging that we don't stop because they have access to things they've never before. I know other people with depression who have a really hard time getting out of their house, but now they can be a part of a church in a way they never were able to be before. Um, and not in like the church show way, but in the like connective way. I mean, I talked about people putting things in the comments, but I think part of the reason they put them in the comments is because then I read them out loud, right? Like I think that 
people have to say things, but what they say has to be honored. Um, and that need is not going to go away. Um, so continuing to sort of try to creatively engage with this challenge, I think, uh, is going to be the is going to be the beauty of the next chapter, and I'm really curious as to what we'll come up with. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> right, right? I think that's really lovely. I mean, you're thinking about those people that weren't included in our spaces before, and you want to keep them included as we as we move forward. And um, I think that's those are important thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. And it it is. I think you're right. It's going to be hybrid for for a long time, especially for congregations that are more urban and, and larger. Um, so yeah, I love that you're thinking through those, those things already. That's what we do. We try to reach people with the gospel, right? Including ourselves. Mm. You know? We're just playing catch up with the Holy Spirit. All the time, right? Yeah. 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 Les, thank you for doing this. Uh, we're really grateful for you to take the time out uh, to talk with us about this. Thank you for your leadership and, uh, and what you're doing on a local level. And uh, thank the folks from St. Aidan's on our behalf for, for being the church in the way that you are in these days. We're grateful, to, we're grateful for it. Thank you, Jason. You're welcome, Les. Les Jokes. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, Stephanie, you want to close this out? Oh, yes. Well, next week we'll have um, Beth Fain, who is also a member of our mission amplification team. She is going to talk to us about stewardship practices and how those can look like in our, in our digital or moving forward, like Les talked about, hybrid age, this, since this isn't going away. So as we, as we close, a few reminders. Make sure you always follow the CDC's guidelines, um, follow the bishop's directives, and as we mentioned, there were some new ones that came out uh, recently um, about what phase two might look like. So look those up. Those are available uh, along with re reflection questions from this conversation and notes and links and our previous ones. They're all available at epicenter.org slash virtual dash church. So oh, thank you, friends, for joining us again. Thanks, friends. Bye. Bye. Bye.